All right, we just finished school drop off and we are going to get in our second to last pre-marathon run in a pair of max cushion shoes in one of my favorite places in the world to run, which is one of these great greenways that we have here in Charlotte. Now, max cushion shoes, and the reason why I wanted to make this video now, because I am planning to do a few more of these lists next week and the week after as I'm recovering from the race and not doing a bunch of first runs and slamming workouts in marathon racing shoes. Uh, so the reason I want to do this list now though is because max cushion shoes are the one category of footwear out there right now that I believe in that in my training through my experience has helped me improve my fitness. It's the one category of footwear, not racing shoes, not lightweight, non-plated trainers. No, max cushion shoes, not even recovery shoes <laughs> like the hoka aura slides that you see me guys wearing and by the way i might be getting a new recovery shoe to test and maybe do some giveaways so stay tuned but max cushion shoes are the one category of footwear that has helped me become a better runner and so i wanted to highlight that today as a nice capstone to our high mileage training block so we're out here in the beautiful park i'm gonna lace up the max cushion shoes that we have on today and let's get out there and hit some miles, baby. Let's do it. So today I'm in the Nike Invincible 3. This is a max cushion shoe that uses Zoom X, which is a race foam, it can be a little bit unstable. And a lot of these shoes that use the race foam have a plate, but this doesn't. And now, one of the reasons why I've banned certain words from the channel is because I do not like meaningless adjectives. So I've banned anything, the adjective super in front of anything related to a shoe, foams, shoes, trainers, that, no, we don't use that phrase. Uh, Max Cushion has not been banned yet. It, I don't think we'll ban it, but I don't like using these adjectives where it's confusing or it's hard to understand what you mean unless you're deep in this space or if there's just no meaning. If you guys have never read the essay, Politics in the English Language by George Orwell, you've got to check that out. But in this video, the way we're going to define Max Cushion shoes is up near 40 millimeters of stack in the heel. And we're going to leave it at that. So every shoe that we feature in this video that I talk about as one of my favorites will have that up near 40 millimeters of stack and heel. Some will have plates, some will not have plates. And I think traditionally we think of this category of max cushion shoes as non-plated only and race shoes we put in a different category and plated training shoes we put in a different category. But the way that I'm going to approach it today and the reason why I wanted to make this video as I was telling you guys about is because these shoes are the shoes that can make it a lot easier for us to improve our fitness. Let's get these miles in and I'll talk you through why that is and then some of the shoes that we're gonna highlight. And also my experience so far with the Nike Invincible 3 because I know some of you guys have been wanting an update. So run today, nice 30 minutes, smooth. Just enjoying being out here, nothing too crazy. And look at this. This is the reason I love running in here. All right, so the reason why Max Cushion shoes are the one category of shoes that has helped me become a better runner is because this is the technology that allows us to do something you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. And that is run higher mileage at higher intensities with quicker 
recovery. <laughs> so if you think about the whole philosophy behind training, is you add greater and greater stimulus, you add increasing levels of stress to the body so that it adapts, it super compensates, and it gets to the next level. And with max cushion shoes, it takes a little bit of that stress off the body, plated or non-plated. But thinking about the non-plated ones, like what we're in today, the Nike Invincible 3, a little bit easier on the joints and muscles so that instead of only being able to run a 30 minute run, maybe we could run a 40 minute run with the same effect on our body and we get a greater aerobic stimulus. You work the heart a little bit more while saving the legs. And the entirety of my training is built on that foundation, working the heart more, working the aerobic system more, not necessarily thrashing hard workouts, although at the end of a training cycle we'll do that. But these max cushion shoes help protect the body to hit that high mileage. And so the reason why I went on that tangent earlier about banned words from the channel is that for most of us out there, a race shoe, and specifically if we're thinking about the edge versus the sky, for most of us out there, and this might be hard to hear, it's not going to make a difference what race shoe we pick. What's going to make a difference is, were you able to hit that 70 mile peak week three times? Were you able to hit those 10 mile long runs six, seven weeks in a row versus getting injured? And I'm not sure if there's been studies that have been done yet about whether max cushion shoes prevent injury. But anecdotally, I can tell you in my experience, it's made it a whole lot more comfortable to hit high mileage. And it's similar to why, you know, Arthur Lydiard, who's one of the coaches whose philosophy I subscribe to, suggests during periods of base building when you're increasing your mileage, run on soft surface. Now, when Lydiard dropped his heater books back in the day and was taken Peter Murray to the Olympics, there were no max cushion shoes. But similar training technology would be running on dirt or running on grass. And so today we have way better tech and that's these race day foams and these soft EVA blend foams that protect the body, make it easier for us to run, get the same training or a greater training stimulus with the lower burden on the muscles. Oh man, it's super muddy here. I got a pair of clean whites on. Ah, oh, deer alert. So when I think about some of my favorite Max Cushion shoes, what they do is make it super easy for me to run. Make a two hour run at the end of it, feel like I just went for a 30 minute jog. And so part of this category is not about speed assistance, but comfort assistance and reducing fatigue. And so all the shoes that I'm highlighting today are comfortable. Some of them do make it easier for you to run fast, but most of them make it easier for you to run longer with the lower burden on your body. And so with that, I will see you guys in a bit. Check out this beautiful scenery. Deer, deer. Man, the deer are out here bobbing today. Absolutely mob. All right, I think I'm actually gonna test these Invincible 3 with some strides here. So strides are 20 second bursts of fast running. So I'm gonna do four reps of that. See how these do with a little bit of pace pickup. Let's do it. 505 pace, first rep. Felt pretty good. Second rep, 452. Third rep, 503. Last rep, 445. Man, these Invincible are so bouncy. If I were to do, also so protective and cushioned. So if I were to do that in a pair of Rebel V3s, I would feel way more to the ground. With this, it's some nice shock absorption. It's so smooth and buttery. It's also nice coming out here where it's completely flat. Versus my neighborhood where it is so up and down. I can really dip down to that five flat pace and let it rip here.
All right, guys, four miles, average 756 pace in the Nike Invincible 3. Soft, cushioned, bouncy, everything that I like about Max Cushion shoes. And we took it on some light trails here. And if you can see the grip, where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton All right, yeah, if you can see the grip here, it is really good. Lots of off-road terrain. Now, this is not gonna go in my top five Max Cushion favorites yet because we only have eight miles on it. That's two runs, because we've not been racking up high mileage. But out of the box, this is an awesome shoe. I like it more out of the box than some of the other shoes that I'm gonna highlight here, but that's because I now have a preference for softer max cushion shoes on these relaxed running days. But I am gonna highlight one or two firmer ones for some of you guys, maybe bigger runners, who like a little bit more cushion underfoot. So with that, we gotta get back in the mom wagon, drive home. The reason I don't have my car is because another unseasonably cold day out here in North Carolina, 40 degrees, and I had the top off the Jeep. So we're gonna whip the mom wagon home and then I'll see you back in the office or outside or something. One last thing about the Invincible 3. I know a big issue is the heel slip and you can see here, it is a little bit loose on the right one. On the left one, it's not, it felt great. On the right one did feel a little bit loose at the beginning, but could easily be resolved by just tying the top laces a little bit tighter. So did not bother me at all. I actually didn't even go back and fix it. I just left it loose and I completely forgot about it. And I was ripping 440 pace on the strides and it was not an issue. So if that is your one concern with the Invincible, it doesn't bother me. It does feel high drop in the back though. That nine, 10 millimeter drop is every single bit of that nine and 10 millimeters. All right guys, I'll actually see you back home. All right, guys, it is 6.55, and more importantly, it is 59 degrees, which it feels colder than that. But anyway, we are out here to talk through some of my favorite Max Cushion shoes. Finally, much awaited. It's been a long day. And as I've talked about, these shoes are awesome because they take the burden off your legs. They make it easier for you to reach different levels of mileage and to recover a little bit quicker and get to that next stage of fitness. I'm gonna talk through some of my current favorites, highlighting different brands, different styles, different foam firmness. We're gonna have some soft ones, some firm ones, and then also different prices. I really wanna make sure in all these roundups I do that we focus on some deals as well as the top of the pile, the top of the heap, cream of the crop. Although you don't always have to pay a lot of money to get the cream of the crop. Some of my favorites you can find for about $100 right now. So with that, let's start off with the New Balance 1080 V13 here. And it's interesting because actually some of these, a lot of these shoes I have high mileage on, this guy is the newest one to reach the 300 mile club. Well, actually the second newest, the Adidas Boston 12 did that. But what I love about the New Balance 1080 V13 here is it is one of the softest shoes. I did a durometer test with a bunch of different shoes and this came out to be the softest. So if you like a super soft and cushioned feel, if you don't want to feel any of that ground, if you want a completely dead end ride experience, this guy is going to be great. So it uses New Balance's Fresh Foam X. It's got about 38 millimeters of stack in the heel here. So it's actually, I think, the lowest stack shoe we're gonna talk about today. New Balance has another shoe above this one, the more V4 that has more stack, but I tried that one. I did not like the shoe at all. It felt heavy. It felt like I was fighting against the foam. This one has the perfect amount of cushion for this fresh foam. I think any the more V4 was just a little bit too much. So it's light enough where I could still do some strides in it like we were doing this morning in the Invincible. Some spurts of faster running, some bursts, there's definitely not a pace workout shoe, but when I wanted to pick up the pace a little bit, it's light enough for that, but this foam is not a compound that's gonna feel super bouncy and energetic. Then the other thing I love about this shoe is everything about the experience stepping into this is extremely soft. So if you look at the tongue here, lots of padding on the tongue, lots of padding on the heel back here. The entire vibe of this shoe is coddled comfort and Another plus, it's Columbia Blue, so shout out to my alma mater here, or Carolina Blue as well. We're here in the, but I guess I'm almost a Duke grad next month, so boo, Carolina Blue, but go Columbia Blue, go Lions, even though we had, I think Columbia Lions had three to four year streak where they didn't win one football game. Anyway, Andrew, midlife runner, doesn't our friend does not like the shoe because it is super soft, so if you are not a fan of soft shoes, do not get this shoe, but if you do want something that is going to be one of the most comfortable things you ever put on in your entire life, 
That is not an exaggeration. Get the New Balance 1080 V13. Great shoe for everyday miles. Good shoe for walking too. I'll highlight one bonus shoe towards the end that I like exclusively for walking, but this is a decent option for walking. Great option for recovery runs. Now, next up here, Asics Nova Blast for the marvelous, the gorgeous twin Porsches. What's awesome about this shoe is highly protective, just like the New Balance 1080 V13. Also on the lighter weight side, like the New Balance 1080 V13, but a completely different vibe in the foam here. This is a much firmer foam compound, so I'm not even gonna tell you what the name of it is. It doesn't matter what ASICS calls the name of this foam because we're gonna highlight another shoe with the same name foam that feels completely different. So foam in here, little bit firmer. It's not a foam that really breaks in. It's I've had, I have this past 100 miles and it feels the same as when it's out of the box, but throughout the life, the magic of this shoe is throughout the life of a run, throughout an hour to 90 to two hour, two hour minutes and out an hour to 90 minute to two hour run the shoe starts to feel even better the longer that you go in it and so that's the magic of this foam it is a little bit on the firmer side and then the first 10 20 minutes i'm in the shoe nearly every single time i'm questioning what is it that i liked about the shoe so much and then as i get further into the run i remember it feels so protective it's got this nice slight bounce to it and it's one of those shoes that it completely melts away on my foot and so 1080 doesn't really do that i always feel that i have something super soft on my foot and i can feel the benefit of that soft foam that's sinking in every time you don't sink in to the nova blast here but you also don't feel like you're running on anything firm like a ton of bricks or anything it's that perfectly i'm not going to say the g word what i will say about the foam is it's not too soft not too firm and with the amount of stack you get a highly protective shoe if you are a bigger runner and want something a little bit more supportive or if you want a shoe for longer runs this would be one of my top picks this is one of the best non-plated shoes on the market for long runs and because it does have a little bit more of that firm structured feeling i prefer it to the 1080 if i'm going over 90 minutes so Great for long runs, not gonna be a max cushion short recovery run option. I would much prefer the 1080 for that, but for longer runs, if you're a bigger runner who wants a daily trainer, that's where the Nova Blast 4 comes into play. Main downside of this guy is the outsole grip is absolutely terrible. So if you live in Pacific Northwest, the UK, Portland, Maine, shout out to Portland, Maine. If you live in any of those areas, by the way, guys, I heard in New England and New York, it snowed this week, which is wild. But if you live in any of those areas where you get a lot of wet weather throughout the spring and the summer, don't buy this shoe. It is absolutely horrible. They do have a trail version of the shoe or, no, or a light road to trail version. It's called the Nova Blast 4 TR that I believe has a different rubber compound and more rubber than this. So that might be the one to look at because the foam really is awesome. And I have heard reports of really good durability of the midsole foam. Our friend Curiosity has got, I, I forget what he said, but super high mileage from his Nova Blast 3. And I've started to see some reports of good durability on the 4 as well. So Nova Blast 4, this is gonna be a good option for long runs if you want a firmer shoe. Now, let's highlight our deal shoe in the max cushion category. You guys, if you watch this channel, I've heard me sing the praises and the merits. I was trying to come up with something clever to say there. Sing the praises and rap the merits of the Triumph. I don't know, that didn't work. But the Saucony Triumph 20 here, so this is like the Nova Blast 4, and Nova Blast almost took over the Triumph's place in my rotation. So this has 350 miles on it and is past its prime. Maybe I'll take it up to the 400 mile club. If anybody's interested in a Triumph 20 400 mile review, let me know, because I think I could knock that one out pretty quickly after my race. But the merits of this shoe are nice bouncy foam, structured, supportive, feeling foam, where it does have that soft bounce to it when you're running fast, but when you're running slower, it doesn't feel like you're sinking in. And so downsides of the shoe, let's get to those first, are a much narrower heel. And if you look at our friend, the Nova Blast 4 here, look how wide this is. It's a girth sum compared to the Triumph 20. This is a little bit of a slimmer fella over here. So it's not gonna be the most stable option with this rear and it can feel a little bit weird at first getting used to it. It's also a higher drop shoe, 10 millimeters. I should have mentioned, this guy's a six millimeter drop. This is eight millimeter drop. So higher drop shoe can feel a little bit weird. 
But those are really the two only downsides. And the more I run in the shoe, the more I ran in the shoe, those two things kind of melted away. And so the benefits is super versatile. This is in my top five most versatile shoe list of all time. It could do any run you throw at it. It's great for long runs. It provides that comfort and cushion for any distance. And then because it has this Power Run Plus foam, which is in the Ride 17 now that we will be testing soon, but Power Run Plus foam, awesome foam. It's a beaded TPU, similar to that old Adidas Ultra Boost with that nice bounce to it and is super durable. So 350 miles on this, still has life, it's just the outsole is gone. If you want a super durable shoe for $100, I mentioned this is the deal shoe, I would go for the Saucony Triumph 20 here. Now, next up, let's highlight our plated shoe of the day in the max cushion category. Now, a lot of times we don't always think about the plated training shoes getting put into this max cushion category, but as I was talking about earlier, the benefit of using a max cushion shoe is that these shoes take that burden off your legs make it easier for us to run and leave us feeling fresher for the next workout. That's exactly the purpose of the New Balance SC Trainer V2 here. It uses a bouncier, softer foam than the 1080 V13. It's designed to be that more fun long run shoe and it has a really aggressive rocker up here in the front. And so if we're thinking about 1080 V13 versus SC Trainer V2, and I never actually did a full comparison between these two, but this one's gonna have a little bit more fun to it, a little bit more bounce to it. It's gonna be better for faster running any workouts, but really similar to the 1080 V13 in what it's best for, and that's any of those runs where you wanna just cruise in comfort. Now, the SC Trainer V2 is a little bit of a faster shoe, and so if you are gonna be looking at your watch and worried about pace, I'd go SC Trainer V2. It also is better for longer runs because you get more elements of speed assistance in it, so three elements that really provide a lot more speed assistance in the SC Trainer V2, so first is the rocker, second is the full-length carbon fiber plate here, and then third is that this fuel cell foam is a much bouncier foam than the fresh foam in the 1080 V13. So if you want a fun shoe for long runs and any recovery runs where you think you're gonna want a little bit more bounce and pep, I would go for the SC Trainer V2. I know we have a lot of discussion about should we use plated shoes all the time for training. I am of the mind that we should be rotating our shoes throughout the year, not only throughout the life of a shoe. So if you're going to get a shoe like the New Balance SC Trainer V2, and use it as a daily trainer. I wouldn't do that personally, but if you're gonna do that, just get a non-plated shoe in the fall when it's time for you to get a new shoe and make sure you're not running in plated shoes for every day and every week, every month, every run throughout the year. So that's where I stand on it. If you want a do-it-all marathon training shoe and you're targeting a four-hour marathon or 3.30 marathon, this is an awesome shoe. It also could be a race shoe for a lot of people out there. So highly recommend SC Trainer V2. And then last or second to last, our penultimate shoe of the day. So this is another deal shoe, the Asics Gel Nimbus 25. I want to highlight two different deals. So this one is $120 at Running Warehouse right now. So before I got the 1080 V13, this was my favorite softer max cushion shoe. It uses the same named foam as our friend Nova Blast 4 over there, but it feels completely different. The ride experience of this is soft. It has a nice rocker up front. It also doesn't have, and I should have mentioned this about the Nova Blast 4. Nova Blast 4 can have a little bit of a disconnected feeling here, and this shoe is designed to handle some faster running. You can do some marathon pace, some strides in it. You could even do some workouts in it. Not my favorite given there's other better options on the market for fast running that are lighter weight and have bounce, more bounce to them. But this shoe has some elements built into it that give you that extra pep. The Nimbus here does not have elements to give you pep. It does have the rocker up front to make you roll along, but you get a lot of foam in the heel here, similar foam to the Nova Blast or similar stack to the Nova Blast at around 41, 42 millimeters. And it's way more of that sinking in feeling similar to the 1080 here. And so I liked this shoe. I didn't love it. I liked it a lot when I was using it. And then when I went over to the 1080 V13, this shoe just felt a little bit easier for me to run in. Not as much of that fighting against the foam feeling that I got a little bit in this, but like the 1080, very comfortable upper, nice stretchy tongue, great padding all around. The upper can get a little bit hot in the warmer months, but really comfortable shoe. I will say the downside is that the foam 
the softer foam, not as durable for me as 1080 v13 here this thing has 300 miles still plenty of life in it and i'll probably go back to it for my marathon recovery and maybe get it up to the 400 mile club at some point this year but this guy here didn't even make it to the 300 mile club for me i tried it a few times at 280 to 70 and it just didn't feel like it was giving me much of anything felt flat it felt lifeless i am a bigger runner and i put a little bit more force into my shoes but still not as good durability as some of the other options here. But if you want a soft cushion shoe for that deal price, $120, this is gonna be a good option. The rubber grip on here, not the best, similar to the Nova Blast, but should work well if you live in a drier climate. Now, last shoe I wanted to highlight is inside. Let me go grab it. One more thing before I go inside. This is technically a daily trainer, which is part of some of the confusion in this category. And there's lots of overlaps and stack heights are getting taller across the board. This is technically an everyday running shoe. That's how it's positioned by New Balance. But it does have a lot of cushion near 40 millimeters. So that's why we're including it today in this roundup. All right, guys. Last pair of shoes that I want to highlight today. Brooks Ghost Max. This is the shoe out of all these shoes I have out here that I wear the most. And... It is not for running. I wear these guys anywhere I go, anytime after I do a hard workout, anytime I'm beat up after a long run, anytime I just want to be comfortable, I put on the Brooks Goes Max. This is the most comfortable shoe out here for walking. I love the 1080 V13 and it has a nice soft cushion feel, but sometimes I don't want to be sinking into the foam all the time, especially when I'm just walking around. This has the perfect feel for walking. It's almost like they designed the shoe for walking and I know, I think they designed it for running, but with the lower drop, the slight rocker up here, I'm getting hyped up because I think this is the best walking shoe of all time, but everything that's gone into the shoe makes it a super comfortable shoe anytime that you want to just have something on your foot and feel like you're gliding along. And so if you're looking for a max cushion shoe for spending a lot of time on your feet, th this is the Disney World shoe. This is the, you're a host in a restaurant and you want something on your feet for eight hours shoe. This is the, you're walking around the hospital hallways for nine hours every night shoe. This is the one, this is the guy, this is him. The Brooks Ghost Max is top of the pile. I'm gonna have to do a the best running shoes. I think I'm gonna have to do a best running shoes for walking video with some of the other ones because none of the other ones I don't think would really be out here. but. Brooks Goes Max is my favorite max cushion shoe for walking, my favorite running shoe in general for walking. Now, thinking about the running capabilities of the shoe, I put 50 miles on it because that's really the minimum for a daily trainer or regular training shoe that I would like to put on before I do a full review. So I did a 50 mile full review of the shoe and towards the end of that 50 miles, I started liking it more. I did a 12 mile workout on the treadmill where I dropped down to some six flat pace and it started feeling good for some faster running but out of the box it was a little firm not exactly what i was looking for in a recovery shoe that's what i was expecting from it when charlie gave it to me for christmas but coming from the 1080 this just didn't hit for me exactly how i wanted but since then i've heard a lot of runners do enjoy the shoe for recovery runs and also for daily trainers and so i think a lot of people will like this for a protective daily trainer that's a little bit on the firmer side not a firm shoe but a little bit firmer than what you're going to get from the nimbus if we're thinking about where these shoes fall it would go 1080 is the softest and then nimbus and then brooks goes max and then probably Nova Blast here. So this is the max cushion training shoe continuum. And I'm actually a little sad. Look at these. These are getting rocked, as we used to say back in Lowell, Massachusetts. These are getting rocked, bro. This is not looking crispy anymore. I'm gonna have to clean these a little bit, but that's what happens when you take your kids to Squirrel Lake Park in the Brooks Ghost Max. Anyway, Ghost Max here. Again, similar to the Nova Blast in that it's not too soft, not too firm, but a little bit softer than the Nova Blast for that walking feel super comfortable shoe for time on feet walking and standing so there you have it guys i'm gonna drop the camera no i'm not gonna drop the camera but these are all the shoes that we have today that i recommend for max cushion if you want that comfortable feel so these are our two deal shoes Saucony triumph 20 a6 gel nimbus 26 by the 1080 if you want the softest most comfortable shoe on the market for everyday runs i don't recommend this for going past 90 minutes for a lot of people it's probably going to be a little bit too soft but everyday runs up to 90 minutes just cruising this is an awesome shoe this is our best shoe out there 
best max cushion shoe, best running shoe out there for walking. Get this guy, Nova Blast 4, if you want a more stable shoe for daily training, but mostly those runs over an hour. That's where this thing really shines. I took this up to three hours and it was an awesome shoe. And then SE Trainer here, this is the, what's the opposite of a dark horse? A white horse? A white stallion. This is the white stallion, the white and bright stallion of the max cushion category because it has that plate in here, but it acts, it behaves, it gallops like a max cushion shoe with just a little bit more of that stallion stamina in its hoof here. So this is the one to get if you want a fun long run shoe that's going to be super protective. I think on cloud monster hyper is coming for this territory a little bit maybe a little bit firmer than this guy but that fun shoe that you want to spend a lot of time in but i don't have enough miles in that shoe to bring it out here today so this is the lineup guys nike invincible 3 on cloud monster hyper on cloud monster or on cloud eclipse i'm going to be testing soon so we're going to have some more things to test soon i'll do an update later in the spring but these are my favorites right now let me know what your favorites are Drop all your hot takes in the comments. It's super helpful when you guys do that so other people reading can see if you're a bigger runner, what's good for you or what's good for them. If you run a certain way, your foot strike, what's good for them. So let me know all of your takes on these shoes. I know we're gonna have some super blast fanboys in the comments. So that's all I have for you today. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. I appreciate you like always. See you then.